Hi, it's uh, Patrick Chalmers in near Saint Croix in the southwest of France, about an hour south of Toulouse. I'm with Katia, who's with an association called Playing for Change. And this is one of the little initiatives that's happening in France. There, frankly, there aren't that many, um, which are doing work with refugee groups. And she's going to explain to us a little bit about what they're doing and how it's going. So, Katia, wha what's Playing for Change doing with regard to the few Syrian refugees that are here in southwest France? Uh, we realize that they are rarely listened to. And Playing for Change, all the projects of Playing for Change are based on the opinion of the people in the village. It's the villagers who decide if they want a music school or not. And it's uh, the locals who decide who will be the teacher, who will be ma the manager, who will be the president. And this is a really important side of Playing for Change. It's not the Americans or the Europeans who decide what happens. And here it's a bit the same. The refugees, they come here, they get told what they have to do all the time. And nobody ever asks them, like no, about now there are the, these uh, young people who arrive between 10 and 17 years old. They are thinking about what school they will put them in, but nobody ever asks them about their personal interests or what school they would like to go. And that's what I'm doing. I'm, I'm open, I listen to them, and uh, based on the projects they have or not, uh, I will try to make them real or explain them, put them in the real situation, and they find out themselves why it does not work like this here. And then they will come back and say, OK, I need to learn, I need to understand how it works. But then the motivation comes from them and they don't feel obliged. They do it motivated and happily. Mm -hmm. and, and let's not um, make a secret of it. I'm from the UK. You are German. Uh, we both lived here for a while. Um, what's the situation in France with regard to refugees re wi as compared with your native Germany, for example? In France, a lot of prejudice and shortcuts and it's uh, people are a lot more individual already without the refugee situation with the association i had trouble motivating people on playing for change projects because it is giving things that are sent away and there's no direct uh, direct result here that they can see and touch and it's very difficult to get people to do something really purely for others where they have no personal refund in, in form of emotion or money or, or results. So with the refugees, it's a bit the same. People are so filled up with negative information in France, particularly in Germany. They did it very intelligently to do this whole movement, welcome the refugees. We are glad to get these refugees because our society needs new people, needs new influences. That was technically a really smart move because they tried to put it in a positive approach from the beginning, which in France never happened. In France it was, we have to take a few refugees. And this uh, defines how the, the, the population reacts to it. Because in the end, if already the, re the responsible say, mm, we don't really want them, we have to take them, then the people don't really feel motivated to get involved. Uh, there are people who are motivated to get involved, but even them have a very fixed uh, idea of how they want to help. They are not really open to listen to the refugees, what they need. And, and tell me, the difference in, in German thinking versus British or French. I mean, you, you talked about your own family situation at the end of the Second World War, um, caught between Allied troops and Russian troops and, and all sorts of trouble, and how that helps you relate to today's refugees and the war they're facing. Yeah, it is. Uh, for I think for Germans it's more uh, realistic. There are more families that have lost somebody in the war or have been refugees themselves. Even the, the reunification in the 90s, a lot of people left their homes and they had to go to the other part of Germany. And so it was a kind of refugee situation and two people had to live together and it's still you still feel it in Germany. And the whole communist uh, international solidarity education they had in the East plays a big role as well because it's not only West Germany, which has a capitalist uh, background and education, but it's all these people that have grown up in East Germany and they have been living uh, with the, the communist international solidarity as the main frame of, of all the education they have lived through. And I think all this reflects the awareness of uh, never fascism again uh, as well. In Germany, you, you treat that topic a lot, while in France, the history is never reflected. The Algerian war has never taken place. The French had nothing to do with Vietnam war. war. Uh, all these topics, they are out of, of history lessons. While in Germany, uh, we, we go into it again and again. And how can we make it differently? And how could we have avoided it? And uh, me, evidently, personally, as my family has been refugees. They've been living in a part of Germany that's today Poland. 
and and they have uh, met help in a village in a little village and everybody was there my grandmother she became the teacher of the village and if people hadn't helped them i wouldn't be here today so i really thought I, it's my giving back of uh, people of my family and it's my time to give back and i feel very personal uh, it's it's the call to to give something back on this level Katya, listen, thanks very much for your time today. It's really interesting to hear your story, but also what you're doing here with play, Playing for Change, Occitanie. So thanks very much for that. So this is Patrick Chalmers for Telemanoir, signing off. <laughs>